This year, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, with the support of their partners at NASA, will launch the JPSS-2 satellite, the third in the Joint Polar Satellite System series. Flying as a secondary payload is NASA's Low Earth Orbit Flight Test of an Inflatable Decelerator, or LOFTED, a demonstration of an inflatable heat shield technology that could one day help land humans on Mars. Join us for a front row seat of the launch as we take you inside the JPSS-2 satellite. With an ever-growing need for environmental data, the United States relies on NOAA's Joint Polar Satellite System, or JPSS. The JPSS system provides the latest advancement in observations gathered from a polar orbit. The images seen here were captured by the two satellites currently flying in this system, the NOAA-NASA SUMI-NPP and NOAA's NOAA-20 satellite. Launched in 2011, SUMI-NPP began as a research satellite and has served as the predecessor and blueprint to the JPSS series, revolutionizing how long-range forecasts are made and long-duration climate fluctuations are tracked. Its sister satellite, JPSS-1, which was renamed NOAA-20 once in orbit, was the first of NOAA's newest generation of polar orbiting satellites that launched in 2017. Still in orbit, SUMI-NPP and NOAA-20 continue to work together. NOAA's polar orbiting satellites travel 512 miles above the Earth, moving at 17,000 miles per hour. Like its predecessors, JPSS-2 will circle the Earth from pole to pole, crossing the equator 14 times daily to capture a full picture of the Earth twice a day. The vital information it will collect about the land, oceans, and atmosphere below will help scientists gain a better understanding of our environment and help improve forecasts. Once in orbit, JPSS-2 will be renamed NOAA-21, and when it's fully commissioned and operational, it will fly roughly 50 minutes, or half an orbit, ahead of NOAA-20. SUMI-NPP will orbit between the two, about 25 minutes away from each. NOAA-21 will become the primary satellite, NOAA-20 will become the backup satellite, and SUMI-NPP will become the tertiary satellite in the JPSS constellation. NOAA relies on its national and international partners to cover other important polar orbits. Information collected is then fed into the National Weather Service's numerical weather prediction models, enabling the accurate three to seven day weather forecasts we rely on. This video shows how the JPSS missions will orbit in conjunction with other NOAA, NASA, international, and US military programs. Since JPSS satellites are designed to have seven years of mission life and the current fleet is aging, JPSS-2 will ensure that we have a robust and resilient constellation of polar orbiting weather satellites for years to come. Polar orbiting satellites work by collecting what are called swaths. As you see in this video, the satellite's advanced sounders and imagers collect data below as they travel around the globe in a precise path. In near real time, this information is combined with information from other satellites and stitched together to create a full global picture. This coverage is vital in remote areas where we may not have land or ocean-based sensors. Due to their orbits, JPSS satellites have a unique vantage point from which to observe Alaska and the Arctic, a view unmatched by other satellites or ground sensors. Thus, they serve as the most important source of meteorological data for these regions. These images highlight just a few of the different activities the satellite can monitor in these areas, including shifts in Arctic sea ice, auroras and nighttime lights, smoke from active wildfires and wildfire devastation, volcanic eruptions, Saharan dust movement, and more. Every time you check your smartphone or TV for your local weather, you're getting a forecast that relies on information provided by three of JPSS's state-of-the-art instruments. The Advanced Technology Microwave Sounder, or ATMS, the Visible Infrared Imaging Radiometer Suite, known as VIRS, 
and the cross-track infrared sounder, known as CRIS, provide critical data for weather forecasters at NOAA's National Weather Service. In fact, 85% of the data feeding today's weather forecast models come from polar orbiting satellites like JPSS-2. The ATMS instrument is a microwave sounder that provides information about the physical properties of our atmosphere, such as temperature and moisture. ATMS is particularly valuable for forecasters because it allows them to see inside and below clouds, and it can be used to produce images inside dangerous storms. The instrument also provides predictions of rainfall, snowfall, and ice, which are crucial for weather-dependent decisions like school and work closures. The CRIS instrument is the most advanced infrared sounder ever developed for orbit. With over 2,200 channels, each observing a different layer of the atmosphere, CRIS provides meteorological data in greater detail than ever before. These animations show just some of the many environmental variables measured by CRIS. ATMS and CRIS work together to take detailed measurements of the atmospheric conditions needed to generate extreme weather forecasts days in advance. The VIRS instrument collects visible and infrared imagery of Earth's land, atmosphere, cryosphere, and oceans, and produces a vast array of unique environmental observations. Some of our most stunning images of Earth from space, like the ones you see here, are produced by the VIRS instrument currently being flown on SUMI NPP. In late September into early October 2022, the VIRS instruments on board NOAA 20 and SUMI NPP followed Hurricane Ian as it made landfall in southwestern Florida as a dangerous Category 4 storm. The storm plowed a path of destruction through the Caribbean, bringing heavy rainfall and dangerous surf to Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, and western Cuba. After crossing over the Florida Peninsula, where it weakened to a tropical storm, it strengthened again over the water to a Category 1 hurricane and made a second landfall near Georgetown, South Carolina. Hurricane Ian caused at least 137 fatalities. It devastated parts of Florida and the Carolinas, leaving millions of homes and businesses without electricity. Recovery costs from the devastation are estimated to be in excess of $67 billion. These images were captured using the Veers imager. The first was taken before the storm made landfall in Florida. The following infrared images were captured earlier as the storm was about to make landfall in Cuba. The data provided by ATMS, CRIS, and VIRS are essential for the National Weather Service and daily weather forecasting. JPSS also features another advanced instrument designed to measure important aspects of our changing environment, the Ozone Mapping and Profiler Suite, or OMPS. The OMPS instrument monitors the health of the planet's ozone layer and continues a crucial global data stream produced by current ozone monitoring systems. OMPS also takes important measurements of sulfur dioxide and other aerosols emitted from volcanoes and particulates from wildfires. These measurements are key to issuing important air quality warnings and creating the National Weather Service's UV indexes, which help you stay safe and sunburn free at the beach. While each instrument alone is a powerful tool for environmental observation, the four instruments on board JPSS-2 are designed to work in tandem to provide a more complete picture of our environment. Taking JPSS-2 from build to launch was a highly coordinated, collaborative effort. The satellite's instruments were assembled across the country and then shipped to Northrop Grumman's facility in Gilbert, Arizona where JPSS-2's main body, or bus, was built. They were then integrated onto the bus and tested. NOAA and its partners at NASA, United Launch Alliance, Northrop Grumman Space Systems, Ball Aerospace, L3 Harris, and Raytheon Technologies 
have worked tirelessly on JPSS-2's construction and upcoming launch. After transporting the satellite from Arizona to California's Vandenberg Space Force Base, crews prepared JPSS-2 to make its voyage to space on board an Atlas V-401 launch vehicle provided by United Launch Alliance. The rocket stands a staggering 191 feet tall and features two stages, or engines, that will boost it into orbit. JPSS-2 is protected during the high-speed ascent through the atmosphere by a 14-foot diameter metallic payload fairing that features hand-painted artwork celebrating the mission. This is a particularly exciting launch, not only because JPSS-2 will be sent into orbit, but it is also the 100th launch that the NASA Launch Services Program will oversee. JPSS-2 will be carried by the last Atlas V launching from Space Launch Complex 3 at Vandenberg Space Force Base. After this launch, modifications will begin at the launch pad to support future Vulcan Centaur launches. When the terminal countdown hits zero, the Atlas V's main engine will light to lift the 750,000 pound rocket off the pad and head southward on a precise trajectory to deliver JPSS-2 into the proper orbit to join the constellation of Sumi MPP and NOAA-20. The Atlas V's first stage uses kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen to power the first four minutes of flight, reaching a top speed of nearly 10,000 miles per hour. The Centaur upper stage then takes over for a 13-minute firing of its engine that is fueled by liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen to deliver JPSS-2 into a sun-synchronous low Earth orbit. At approximately 28 minutes after liftoff, JPSS-2 is released from the launch vehicle to begin its new life in space. At this point, JPSS-2 will be flying alone in outer space for the first time. Roughly one hour and 15 minutes after launch, the lofted experiment will separate from the Atlas V. After it does so, it will re-enter the atmosphere and deploy its parachute before landing in the water approximately two hours post-launch in Hawaii, where it will be retrieved from the Pacific Ocean with support from ULA and the Hawaii Resource Group. Lofted will be the largest inflatable aerodynamic decelerator, or aeroshell, to ever re-enter the atmosphere. Back in space, scientists will begin to wake up JPSS-2, now deemed NOAA-21. By deploying its solar array and navigational systems in the days to follow, the JPSS team will prepare the satellite and its instruments for observation. JPSS-2 is an incredible machine. We are excited that you can join us as we see it off on its mission to continue a legacy of vital contributions to United States weather forecasting.